locked. I'm here at step two, or sorry, is step one or step two? Yeah, step two, where basically I'm putting this uh, trailing edge bar on here, and you have to use a tank sealer to uh, glue it. It's effectively a glue. I've got the pieces here ready to go. I've got both sides of the rudder finished and ready to be used. But I don't have any tank sealer. I didn't realize I had to buy it. It's one of those things I, I'm usually pretty careful about reading beforehand what I'm supposed to be doing, and I just completely missed that I needed this. So I've got an order in. It's coming. It'll probably be a week or more before it gets here. Uh, in the meantime, I think I'm going to put these pieces aside and start working on the, uh, the next section and then come back to this when the stuff gets here. So, at least I get to make progress. Progress indeed. So, here we have step one. Uh, this is a deburring step. I have to go through and peel off all the bluing off all this aluminum. Um, I hate this process. Sometimes I wish it didn't come with it. And then pull out the Scotch-Brite pad and get to uh, scraping. I still question uh, the value of this. I mean, I know you're supposed to do it everywhere, and as you can see, I'm diligently doing it, but I wonder if it's actually necessary. It's I just, I don't know, I can't really wrap my head around the whole point of it. Um, but once I get the the uh, pieces deburred and ready for use, I go through and do some test clicking to make sure I know exactly what I'm doing. Uh, I then go back and do the spacer holes, or the lightning holes, rather, uh, to thoroughly deburr. Uh, again, in the, keeping with the tradition that you're supposed to do it, though I don't really know why. Uh, then move on to actually making the part, Clico together, and getting it working. There's a lot of final drilling of the various hinge brackets. At this point, uh, you should be an old hand at this. This is the fourth or fifth time you've done it, so it's uh, trivial, easy, no big deal. And then it's about uh, drilling the, or match drilling the various holes between the two pieces, which again is something you've done ad nauseum at this point, so there's no magic or mystery there. And here we have me countersinking. Uh, a couple of the holes have to be countersunk because when you assemble it all together, you'll see that two of the rivets, if they weren't countersunk, you wouldn't actually be able to marry up the pieces. Uh, makes sense once you see it all together, but while you're doing it, it's kind of one of those, why am I countersinking these two when there's, you know, 20 of them on either side of it that are not countersunk? Eventually, I take this, uh, more deburring there. Eventually, I take this all out and get it all primed up. Uh, I was running out of primer at this point, so I just primed the middle uh, of the area where I was going to be working and I, in fact I think I only primered one side of it even the back side wasn't primered I figured I'll I'll just prime the two pieces that are being married together and then I'll come back and prime the rest of it later and you can see that here so the center of it is is uh, primed on the top but not on the bottom and this is me just going through and using the uh, rivet squeezer to squeeze all the various rivets together and make sure uh, that you rivet the ones that are supposed to rivet and don't rivet some that are not. Uh, there, there, there are some places where uh, you have to be pretty careful and make sure you read because uh, it's very well marked on the plans. Just know that you'll be drilling some holes that don't exist and then not drilling others that do exist. And same thing with, uh, same thing with riveting. And here's the final results.